Hey, my name is Seb, and I'm going to teach you how to create a cinematic scene in Armory Forger using the Infusion Workbench. In Armor 3, you would use the Eden Editor for your projects, but now with Armory Forger, we use the Infusion Engine. The great thing about this new engine is that it has tools that makes the process of creating cinematics and machinima more streamlined, mainly because everything is done within one workspace. The trailers you see for the game have all been made this way. Quickly, if you do not know, the Infusion Workbench is in short the toolbox for creating mods and user-made content for the Arma platform. So if you purchase Armory Forger, you gain access to and can install Armory Forger tools. Also keep in mind that this tutorial is not a deep dive into the engine itself, but rather a series that is meant as a foundation for you to get going with creating. From this series, you can keep adding new techniques as we learn more about the capabilities of the Infusion Engine. This is part 1 of a 4 part series, and in this episode I will show you how you get set up and how to work the cinematic camera. In the upcoming episodes I will cover things as scripting, event tracks and scripting effects. We will also cover animation tracks and exporting your project, as well as basic ways of doing lighting and composition. Now let's begin. When you launch the Armor Reforger tools, you will be greeted with the Infusion Workbench Launcher. Now let's create a new project, and now let's name it Cinematic Project. This is the main page of the Workbench. Here you can see all of the tools available. For creating cinematics, we're going to use the World Editor. We are now in the World Editor. To the left you have the Hierarchy. This is where you find the assets you place down in the world. On the bottom, there's a create, where you can add new assets. On the top, you have a toolbar, and in the middle is your viewport, with options. To the right is the properties overview. This is where info will be displayed on the objects that you have chosen. And on the bottom, you have five windows. This is where you most importantly will find the cinematic timeline and resource library. Let's begin with loading a world where you can start working. Go to the resource library and search eden.ent and double click eden.ent. You have now loaded Everon and you can freely move around with the camera holding down the right mouse button and using WASD to move. The next thing we're going to do is create a sub scene. Move your cursor to the top left and press create new world. Now let's create a sub scene of the current world. Once that is done, press file, save world. Find your project folder, Cinematic Project, and name it Cinematic World. Now let's save it under your project folder, so you can easily keep working on it later. You should then see your Cinematic underscore world entity in your project folder. In the hierarchy on your left, you will now see that this world is active as the active layer. Everything you place down will now be inside of this layer. Now let's create a camera timeline. Choose to cinematic timeline on the bottom, press add a new scene, name your scene first underscore scene. Now you can see that the timeline is open. You can of course create multiple scenes and choose them with this scene selector. You can use the plus and minus keys to create or delete scenes. To the right is the timestamp. It shows in minutes, seconds and frames. Next is the camera view. Enabling this makes the viewport the camera view. Next to that is the show camera path button. Enabling it will visualize the camera track as it's moving through the scene. Then it's a simple play restart and last frame button. And this is the preview button. And lastly, the export and options menu. In the options you will find things like playback speed, unit selection between frames and seconds, export settings for rendering, and many more things. We will get back to these options later. Now let's add our first camera. Press add track and choose camera track. Choose a name or just keep the default camera name. You now have created your first camera. If you double click the camera, you will get all of the options. Before we start using them, choose camera in the viewport and change the aspect ratio to 16 by nine. The camera is the most important tool for creating cinematics, so let's go through all of the options first. 
everything on the timeline is run by keyframes. To the right of the camera you can add your first keyframe. This will add the key to whatever frame you currently have selected and all options will apply to that keyframe. Let me show you. First I choose the start position and add a key. You can now see that the camera position including the angle of the camera has a key. Now let's change the angle set axis to 10. You can see the camera tilting in the viewport. Next is the FOV. FOV is field of view. It works almost like a focal length on a lens, but here lower values means a smaller FOV and higher values means a higher FOV. So let's set that to 35. DOF means depth of field and it's what defines the part of the image that is in focus and what is blurred out. If we enable it, we have to set the distance the camera has focus. So let's say that distance is 20 meters. Now let's set the near length to zero and the far length to 1000. You will see the it blurs the background. Higher values creates more blur. We can see the effect by giving both the far and the near a value of 2000. If you move the focus distance now you can see how it affects the scene. Let's set it to 1000 over 1000. HDR means high dynamic range and is the simulated exposure to the camera lens. You can control this and give low light environments more light by exposing the lens more. Different times of day and weather require different exposure settings. Now let's set a new keyframe at the end of the timeline. The hotkey for this is K. We move the cursor to the end and then move the camera back a few meters and then add a new keyframe. When you now move the cursor on the timeline, you can see it animates the camera between the two keyframes. If you have the camera path enabled, you can see this visualized. Now let's change some more settings on the last key. Set the set angle to zero, the FOV to like 50 and the exposure to 15. Now you can see how it works in real time. Now you can play around with the camera settings to get more familiar with it. Now let's say you want to extend the scene. You can do that by adding a new value right here in the end frame panel. You should also know that you can add several cameras to one scene, all with their own settings. If you add a camera, it will appear below your original one. The camera on top is the prioritized one. So if you move the second camera on top and create a camera path, say from the third second to the fifth, it will switch cameras on that keyframe. With just these tools, I was able to create this video. These basics can be used to showcase maps or mods or anything else that you've made. Now, this marks the end of this episode. In the next episode, we will cover scripted events and effects. If you have found this episode helpful, please subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions. Also consider leaving a like on the video to show support. That's all from me. See you in the next episode. Stay safe.